Hi, No Always Kid here, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at deploying transparent mode on the Cisco ASA. This video is part of my CCIE security series uh, based on the studies that I am doing for the implementing and operating Cisco Secure Core Technologies version 1, exam 350, iPhone 701, and we are covering. 2.2 of the blueprint today so as I always do I start off with some main points on what we are going to look at today so for the ASA transparent mode we will just cover these main points that I've got down here. So the first one is that the ASA acts as a bump in the wire. So essentially it is a layer two device. Um, it's not a layer three device. The interfaces use bridge group interfaces or BVIs. So the interfaces that are going to be used within a transparent mode ASA uh, they're assigned to BVIs. Bridge, bridge group interfaces cannot communicate with one another. So if you have bridge group uh, one and bridge group two, they need and, and they need to communicate with one another, you do need to send that traffic up to, let's say, a layer three router for it to route back down into the uh, separate bridge group. So you can't route between uh, bridge groups on the on the ASA. Um, you still have the option to configure um, the management interface. So if you want to have a separate management connection to the ASA, that is possible. Bridge groups should have IP addresses assigned to them. Forward packets are based on the destination MAC address, so when packets are forwarded, they're based purely on the destination MAC address. The ASA in transparent mode will use ARP or ICMP to resolve MAC addresses of the next stop device, and it will not flood all interfaces if it does not know about the next hop MAC address. Traffic from a higher security level to a lower security level is permitted by default. So this is the same behavior as a uh, normal ASA rooted ASA. App can pass through the firewall without an ACL. However, CDP cannot. So you will have to um, explicitly allow that if that is what you want to do. When you change firewall modes, it will wipe all the configuration. So the default firewall mode for the ASA is the rooted mode. To change to a transparent mode firewall, uh, you will lose all your configurations if you do have configuration on a rooted firewall. So it's best to make sure that you do back those up before changing to a transparent mode. Uh, 250 bridge groups are supported with four interfaces in a bridge group so that's quite a lot with transparent mode there is some unsupported features so there's no support for dynamic routing so you cannot configure let's say for instance OSPF on the transparent ASA however you can permit um, routing protocols through the transparent firewall but this needs to be explicitly done so if you don't um, allow those multicast packets then uh, they will be denied if you do need to establish a uh, adjacency with a device through the transparent firewall the transparent firewall will not support DHCP relay, but it can act as a DHCP server, but only for IPv4. There is no support for DDNS, no QoS support, and no VPN support in transparent mode. It only supports site-to-site -site VPN for the management. There is 
Also, no NAT support. It's pretty straightforward configuring the transparent mode on the ASA. And I've just put a note there that configurations may vary depending on the ASA version that is being used. So it's always best to check the documentation, the Cisco documentation, before you go ahead and start to configure transparent mode. The following demonstration today, we will be using um, ASA code 9.12. So the configuration or the steps below are what will be used to configure transparent mode. So it's pretty straightforward as I say. So we start by changing the ASA to transparent mode. And as I say, make sure you do back up your configurations if there is any on a uh, ASA that is in rooted mode. Then we configure the physical interfaces. So we configure the name, the security level, and the bridge group that it's going to be assigned to. The bridge group part I normally come back to because I configure step three first. So I will configure the bridge groups first and then assign the interfaces, the physical interfaces to the bridge group. In regards to the actual configuration of the bridge groups, pretty straightforward to configure and you assign the IP address to the actual bridge group itself and not the physical interfaces. Depending on your environment, you may want to configure ACLs to allow certain flows to pass through the transparent firewall. I have put that as optional uh, because we will not be uh, demonstrating that part in this demonstration today. And then last of all, uh, verify the configuration. So it's always best to verify your configuration before saving the change. So our demonstration today is pretty straightforward. The purpose of this is to demonstrate the configuration on the ASA for the transparent firewall. So we will be configuring one ASA V in transparent mode and we have a switch either side, so left and right, and then we have two VPCs on either side as well. So the all aim today is to configure transparent mode and to verify connectivity between two VPCs. So we'll just get into the lab environment now. And the switches have already been configured. Um, this topology we're using VLAN 10 uh, throughout the environment, and we're going to use one bridge group, which is going to be BVI 1 once we've configured it. The VPCs uh, should also be configured. We can take a look at those configurations as well. The SA is a fresh install, so we'll just start by configuring an host name just call this ASA lab Change this firewall to transparent so as I said by default it is in uh, rooted mode so we can verify about that by doing show firewall so we can see there that the firewall mode is router so we just do firewall and if you question mark we can see there we can switch it to transparent so that is done, show firewall. So now we can see it's in transparent mode. So now what we'll do is we'll configure the interfaces. So we'll start off by configuring uh, gig 01. So interface gig 01. And we'll do name if we'll give this one outside. Security level is set by default to zero. We'll leave that as it is. We'll just issue a no shut and we will not apply the bridge uh, group interface yet because we've not configured that. So we'll just go across to interface gig zero one. And this time we'll call this one inside and by default we get the security level of 100. We'll issue a no shut down for that. And then we'll go to interface BVI1 and if we do a question mark we can see the options we have 
um, so we can give it a description, uh, IP address, and that's pretty much it. So what we'll do is we'll specify an IP address of 192.168.10.2 we'll use, and it's a slash 24. We'll just issue a no shutdown, which we don't actually need. So once that's done, uh, we can now assign the interfaces to the bridge group. So interface gig 00, and if we just do a question mark, we can see that we've got a command here, bridge group, so we can actually specify uh, which bridge group this physical interface will belong to. So we'll just do bridge group one, and then the save for interface gig zero one, and that's gonna be bridge group one as well. So if we just do show name if, we've got the two interfaces, and if we do show bridge group one, we can see that we've got bridge group one interfaces that are assigned is gig Zero zero and zero one. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enable login because we will need this in a minute. Uh, login uh, buffer. Then we'll just enable debugging on that. Um, save that config. And as I said, the switch and the VPC should already be configured. So if we just do a show, so this is for VPC4, which is here. Uh, so you can see we've got an IP address of 10.10 .10 and the gateway is 10.3. So that's going to be the switch. We can verify that. Yep, so VLAN 10 on switch 2 is 10.3. And then if we look at VPC 5, that's got an IP address of 10.11 with a gateway of 10.1. So let's have a look at switch 1. Okay, so we can see that VPC 5 has the gateway on switch 1. So let's just try, before we try and actually get across to each VPC, let's try and ping the gateways and just make sure. So for VPC5, we're going to ping 192.168.10.1, which is all well and good. And then we'll see if we can reach the gateway for VPC4 which is 192.168.10.3 okay so that's good as well excellent so now if we uh, recall the security levels so if we just do show name if we can see that gig 00 has a security level of 0 so this is this interface connecting to VPC5 and you can see that gig 01 has a security level of 100 which is connecting to VPC4 so by default we should be able to well no we shouldn't be able to ping until we have enabled ICMP inspection so once ICMP inspection is enabled I'll just do this quickly uh, we should be able to ping from VPC4 to VPC5 but VPC5 shouldn't be able to ping v VPC4 because of the security level. So we'll just test that in a minute. Let me just enable uh, this quickly. Uh, do, 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 do. Inspection, um, let's see, inspect ICMP, do a right man on that. Let's just do show login include deny. Okay, so there's not been denied there at the moment. So as I say, from VPC4, we should be able to ping VPC5 without any problem. So let's try that. Uh, ping 192.168.10.11. Uh, 
and we can see that that's fine we have no denies on the um, ASA that's the one that's been used and then we, that's a short lived connection so it won't show up there and then as I say from VPC5 this should be um, denied so let's try and ping 192.168.10.11 Sorry, that's pinging itself, 10.10, .10, rather. We can see there that that's not permitted. So if we have a look at the logs on the firewall, we can see there that we're getting uh, denies. And that's from 10.11 to inside 10.10. .10. So to allow that traffic, we would need to create an ACL, so we can do that now. Uh, let's call it access list outside, and then we'll do permit um, ICMP from 192.168.10.11. specify the net mask so it's post and then go into 192.168.10.10 uh, and then do, 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 do. specify eight zero done okay so we'll do access group outside and the traffic's coming inbound interface is um, outside and then that's done Okay, cool. So if we try now to ping again, let's see what we get. Okay, so now we can see that that floor is the rule on the firewall. So they're the, just the denies that are going from earlier. So now if we uh, show run access list, you can see our access list there. So show access list you can see that access list there configured so we can see that none have been denied okay so that's simply how you configure the ASA in transparent mode that's a very quick demonstration of how to do so. I have some useful links here that I will share after this uh, video has been uploaded but please do like, subscribe if you found the content useful and if you've got any questions feel free to drop me a comment in the comment section or on any of my social media platforms. But again thank you for watching this video has covered part of 2.2 in the implementing and operating Cisco security core technologies 350 iPhone 701